of tea, dear. You know I don't seem to want it. Maybe some vodka instead? <laughs> I don't drink vodka every day. Oh, oh. It's too hot now, anyway. Danny. How long have we known each other? How long? Oh, oh God, help me think. You came to these parts? <laughs> when was it? It was 11 winters ago. It was two years before Sonia's mother died. Mm. And she was still alive then. Oh, that was 11 years ago, maybe more. Have I changed much? Oh my, yes. You used to be young and handsome. <laughs> now you're old and not so handsome, and you drink. <laughs> yes, in ten years I have changed. Do you know why? I'm overworked. I'm on my feet all day. I never rest. You go to bed thinking I'll be dragged out to visit a sick bed in the middle of the night. I've worked since I've known you without a day off. How can I help growing old? Really, life is boring anyway. It's a stupid, dirty business, that's all life is. Everyone around here is foolish, and being here two or three years makes one foolish as well. I'm as foolish as the rest. But not as stupid. I have not gotten stupid yet, thank God. But I have to have nothing. I want nothing, I need nothing, there's no one I love except you. You know, when I was little, I had a nanny just like you. Would you like a little something to eat? No, no, no. The third week of Lent, I was sent to the epidemic at Malinskoy with typhus. Peasants were all just lying around together in their huts. Even the cats and pigs were running around among the sick. Dirt, smoke. Unbelievable. Well, I worked all day. Not a bite to eat. And when I came home, there was still more work to do. A switchman from the railroad was brought in, and I was, I was laying him on the operating table, and he, he went and died in my arms under chloroform. Then my, my feeling, my dead feeling, woke up again, and I thought, I sat down, closed my eyes like this, and I thought, a thousand years from now, will those who come after us, who, for whom we're paving the way, will they remember us kindly or at all? No. Well, they may forget, but God won't. <laughs> Thank you. That's well said. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Hmm. Yes. You've been asleep. Yes. Hmm. Ever since the professor and his wife arrived, life seems to have jumped the track. Sleep at the wrong time. Drink wine. Neat, I don't know what, but lunch and dinner. It's not helping. Mm -hmm. Sonia and I used to work together all the time. Every moment. Now Sonia works alone, and I only eat and sleep and drink. Something's wrong. Topsy turvy, that's what it is. The professor sleeps all morning till noon, the sum of our boiling all morning waiting for him. We used to have dinner at one like everybody else before they came. Now we have it at seven. The professor writes and reads all night, and then at two in the morning the bell rings. Oh dear God, what is it? The professor wants his tea. Wake up the house. Light the sum of our topsy turvy. Uh, how long will they be here? A hundred years. <laughs> the professor's going to live here now. Now look. The sun has been on this table for two hours waiting for them, and they're out walking. It's all right. It's all right. Here they come. Oh, superb, superb. What beautiful views. Yes, wonderful, Your Excellency. Tomorrow we'll go into the forest, Papa, shall we? Tea is ready, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my friends, will you please have my tea sent to my study? I have some work to finish. You'll love the forest, Papa. Uh, 
It's a hot, stifling day, and our learned scholar goes out in his overcoat, carrying an umbrella. Well, he wants to take care of himself. I've never seen a more beautiful woman. I walk in the fields, in the garden. I look at the table here, Marina. I'm just so happy. We all live in peace. The weather's fine. What more could the soul desire? Such a hey, Bob. Has. What? Tell us something. What shall I tell you? Well, isn't there anything new? No, it's all old. Well, I'm just the same. Or maybe worse, because now I'm lazy. I don't do anything now but croak like an old crow. Mamma, the old magpie. Mama is still warbling on about the rights of women with one eye in the grave and the other looking into her books for the dawn of a new age. But the professor. The professor. <laughs> sits in his library from morning till night, as always. With furrowed brow and racking brains we write and write, and write, and ne'er a word of praise we hear our labors to requite. <laughs> I feel sorry for the paper. <laughs> <laughs> he should write his autobiography. What a great subject for a book he would make. The life of a retired professor, an old dried up fish, gout, headaches, rheumatism, his liver tortured by jealousy and envy. The old fish, living on the estate of his first wife, even though he hates it, because he can't afford to live in town. He's forever whining about his hard lot, though in fact he's been extraordinarily lucky. He's the son of a poor sexton who rose up in the university to a degree and a professor's chair, became the son-in-law of a senator, and now is called Your Excellency, and so on. But here's the best part, for 25 years, this man has been writing on art, not knowing the first thing about it. He's been feeding on other men's ideas about realism and naturalism and all that nonsense for 25 years. For 25 years he's been speaking and writing about things that the intelligent know about already and the stupid could care less about. For 25 years he's been making his imaginary mountains out of molehills. Just think of the smugness, the pretentiousness. For 25 years, he's been borrowing and masquerading in these feathers and keeping someone better out of a job. And now he's retired. And not a single living soul is aware of him. And yet, look at him, striding over the earth like a demigod. I believe you're jealous of him. Yes, I am and the success he's had with women. Don Juan himself, his first wife, my sister, oh, was a beautiful, gentle being, as, as pure as that blue sky, noble, kind-hearted, with more admirers than he's ever had students. And she loved him as only angels can love those as pure and beautiful as themselves. My mother, his mother-in-law, adores him, still worships him to this day. <laughs> his second wife is, as you see, beautiful, sensitive. She married him in his old age and gave all of her youth and beauty and her freedom to him. Why? For what? Is she faithful? Yes, sadly. Why sadly? <laughs> Uh, such fidelity is false and unnatural, root and branch. That sounds right, but there's no logic to it. It's immoral for a woman to cheat on an old husband whom she can't bear, but for her to smother her youth and her heart and kill all her desire, oh, that's very moral. No, <laughs> don't talk that way. Anyone who would betray a wife or a husband is an untrustworthy person who could, who might, Betray their country. Shut up, Waffles. <laughs> no, Bonnie, excuse me, but my wife, wife left me the day after our wedding with the man she truly loved. 
guess she didn't like my looks. But I love her, and I've always been faithful to her. I helped her to support the education of the children she had with her lover. I lost my happiness, but not my pride. And she, her youth is gone, her beauty's faded over time, the man she's loved is dead. What about her? Chick, chick, chick. Chick. Is the 
Gentlemen, I bid you goodbye. I would be honored if you would like to come with Sonia and visit my estate someday. It's not large, but if you're interested, I could show you the garden. And we have a tree nursery and an orchard. You won't find one like it within a thousand miles of here. Next door is the state forest. Now, the forester is old and often sick, so I get to look after it for him. Yes, I've heard already that you love the woods. Of course, it is a good deed, helping to preserve them, but since you're a doctor, doesn't it interfere with your real calling? <laughs> My real calling? Well, God alone knows what that is. And is it interesting? Yes, very. Oh, very, very interesting. But you're still young. You don't look over 36 or 7, and I think the woods can't be that interesting. I would think that you'd find them boring. No! It's fascinating. Mikhail Lvovich plants new trees every year and watches over the old woods to keep them from being burned completely. He's already received a medal and a diploma for it. <laughs> if you ask him, you'll agree with him entirely. He says that the forests make the earth more beautiful and teach mankind to appreciate beauty and philosophy. Forests temper a harsh climate, and in countries where the climate is more mild, People live more in harmony with nature, are more kind and gentle. <laughs> People who live in such countries are more comely, flexible, sensitive. Their speech is elegant, their movements are graceful. They have a joyful philosophy. Art and sciences thrive among them. Their treatment of women is noble, refined. Bravo, <laughs> bravo. <laughs> All very nice, but also unconvincing. So, my friend, you must allow me to go on burning logs in my stoves and building my barns out of wood. You can burn peat in your stoves, and you can build your barns out of stone. Yes, yeah, sometimes cutting the woods is necessary, but why destroy the forests? The woods of Russia are falling under the axe. Millions of trees have gone. Homes of wild animals and birds have been destroyed, the rivers run dry, and the beautiful land is gone forever. And all because man is too stupid and too lazy to bend down and pick up fuel from the ground. Isn't that right? Aren't we stupid barbarians to burn up so much beauty in our stoves and destroy what we cannot renew? We were made with the ability to create. We were given reason and judgment to increase those gifts that we've been given, but we have not created. We've only destroyed. The forests are cut down. The rivers dry up. The wildlife disappears. The climate is ruined, and the earth becomes more hideous and more desolate every day. Yes, I see that ironic look in your eye. You don't take me seriously. You think me an eccentric, and, and well, perhaps you're right, but I pass by the peasants' woods that I have saved from the axe. And I hear the young trees that I planted with my own hands sighing in the wind. And I think that we could all have the power to affect the climate. And if mankind is happy in a thousand years from now, I will have played a part in that happiness. I, I plant a birch tree. I see it budding, green, swaying in the wind. And my heart fills with such pride. In it. However, I have to come. And perhaps it is all just eccentric nonsense. Thank you for the honor of your hospitality. Goodbye. When will you come to see us again? I don't really guess that. Don't wait a whole time. You've been behaving abominably again, Ivan Petrovich. Where's the sense of teasing your mother and talking about the perpetuum mobile? 
And today at breakfast you quarreled with Alexander again. Really, your behavior what? is it's too petty. But what if I hate your husband? Why should you hate Alexander? There's no real reason. He's just like everyone else. <laughs> and no worse than you. If only you could see your face. The way you move, your, your gestures. How tedious your life must be. It is tedious. Yes, it's boring. You all abuse my husband and look on me with compassion. You think, poor young woman married to an old man. How well I understand your compassion. Something Astroff said just now about how you thoughtlessly destroyed the forest so that there will soon be none left on earth. So you destroy mankind too, and soon innocence and faith and self sacrifice will disappear like the forests. Why, why can't you look on a woman calmly unless she is yours? Because the doctor was right. There's a demon of destruction in all of you, and you have no mercy on the woods or the birds, on women or each other. I don't like your philosophy. That doctor has a tired, sensitive face. An interesting face. Sonia evidently likes him. I think she's in love with him, and I can understand why. This is the third time he's been here since we arrived, and I haven't had a real talk with him or even been nice to him. He probably thinks I'm unkind. Yvonne, you know the reason I think you and I are such good friends? I think it's because we're both so lonely and unhappy. Yes, unhappy. Don't look at me like that, please. What? Like what? Don't look at me in that way. I don't like it. Who else can I look at you? I love you. But you're my life, joy, everything. I know, I know you don't love me back. You never will. But I never asked you to. Please, just let me look at you. Just let me listen to your voice. Oh, I don't hear you. Just let me you in silence. This is agony. Let me be near you. Is it you, Sonia? It's me. Oh, it's you, Lenochka. This pain is intolerable. Your blanket fell down. I'll shut the window. No. I'm suffocating in here. Dozed off just now, and I dreamt my left leg belonged to someone else. And the pain woke me up. I, I don't believe this is gout. It's, it's more like rheumatism. What time is it? Twenty minutes past twelve. I, I want you to look for Petrushkov in the library tomorrow. I, I think we have him. What? Petrushkov! Look. For the volume of Petrushkov tomorrow morning. We used to have him, I recall. Why do I find it so hard to breathe? You're tired. You haven't slept for two nights. They say Turgenev got angina pectoris from gout. I'm afraid I'll get it too. Damn this old age. Hell with it. I'm old. I disgust myself. I'm sure all of you are disgusted with the very sight of me. You say that as if all of us are to blame for it. And I've discussed you most of all. Of course, you're, you're right. I'm not an idiot, I understand. You're a young woman. You're healthy, beautiful. You want to live. And I'm an old man, practically a corpse. You think I don't understand? I, I mean... It's stupid for me to go on living 
But just wait. Soon you all will be free. It won't last much longer. God, please. I'm exhausted. Please, please stop. Yes. Everyone is exhausted because of me. Everyone is depressed, bored, wasting their youth, and I'm the only one who's happy. Yes, yes, it's true. Be quiet. You've worn me out. Yes, I've worn everyone out. Yes, of course. Alexander, I can't stand this. What do you want from me? Sod, everyone listens to Ivan Petrovich and Mariah Vasilyevna. His old idiot of a mother starts babbling about something, it's fine. I say a word, everyone is miserable. It's true. The sound of my voice is repulsive. Fine, fine. Let's say I am repulsive. What if I am a tyrannical, egotistical old man? Haven't I earned the right to be so? Can I be even a little wrapped up in myself? Haven't I the right to be cared for in my old age? No one disputes your rights. The wind is rising. I'll, I'll shut the window. It's going to rain. No one is disputing your rights. All my life was devoted to learning. I'm used to my study, the lecture halls, the respect of my colleagues. Then, then to find myself shut up in this tomb, it's unbearable. Listening to the same stupid people babbling on and on from morning till night. I want my life back. I want my success. The simple comforts I was used to. In exile mourning for my past. Dear God, I can't even be forgiven for being old. Well, just wait a little while. In five or six years, I'll be old myself. Papa, you told me to send for Dr. Ostrov, and now that he's here, you refuse to see him. It's not nice to give the man so much trouble for nothing. Why do I care? Your Dr. Ostrov can't help me. That fool. He knows as much about medicine as I do about astronomy. What do you want me to do? We can't send for the whole medical faculty, can we, to treat your doubt? I won't talk to that madman. Do as you like. It doesn't matter to me. What time is it now? Almost one o'clock. It's suffocating in here. Sonia, hand me my drops from the table. Just a moment. Here they are. No, not those. The drops I asked for. Can I ask you to do anything? Please don't be so peevish. Some people may like it, but I don't, so you must spare me if you can. slept for two nights. Then let them go to bed. But you go away too. Thank you anyway. I, I beg you, please, go. For the sake of our former friendship. And don't protest. We'll talk some other time. Our former friendship. Our former... Oh, My dear, don't leave me alone with him. He'll talk me to death. This is becoming funny. Well, the samovar is still on the table. 
But very well go to bed, yes. No one can get to bed. I've exhausted everyone. I'm the only one who's happy. What's the matter, my dear? <laughs> Your legs hurt? <laughs> well, my own legs are aching too. You've had this trouble for so long. Sonia's poor dead mother. Oh, God rest her soul. Vera Petrovna, her sainted mother. Well, she used to stay up late with you too and wear herself out worrying about you. She loved you so much. Old people are like little children. They want to be pitied, but nobody does somehow. Come, sweetheart, come to bed. I'll, I'll make you some linen tea, and I'll warm your poor feet, and I'll say a prayer for you. Let's go, Maria. Oh, I have pain in my own legs, oh, so painful. Sonia's mother used to cry over you. She was so worried. That was when you were still young and foolish, Sonia. Come here, come to bed. He's exhausted me. I can hardly stand up. He's exhausted you, and I exhaust myself. I haven't slept for three nights. Something's wrong here in this house. <laughs> Your mother hates everything except her pamphlets. And the professor, the professor has anxiety. He doesn't trust me. He's afraid of you. He's afraid of you. Sonia's mad at her father and me. She hasn't spoken to me in two weeks. <coughs> I'm exhausted and I've started crying 20 times today. Something's wrong here. There's no need for analysis. You're an intelligent man, Ivan. You know the world isn't destroyed by evil forces, but by hate and spiteful malice and all this petty bickering. It's up to you to cope with it, to make peace, and not to growl at everyone just because you're suffering. First, help me make peace with myself. Let me go. Please, go away. The rain will be over soon, and everything will be washed clean again. But I'm not refreshed. I can't stop thinking how my life is over, my, my past. I wasted it on nothing, and the, the present has gone so terribly wrong. Well, what will I do with my life and this useless, stupid love that I feel for you? What happens to them, this wonderful feeling? It's like a a ray of sunshine down in a dark well. It's lost. It's wasted and my life is too. When you tell me you love me, I feel numb. I don't know what to say. Forgive me, I just don't have anything to say. Good night. You don't know how sad it is to me. But right next to me here in this house, another life, yours, <coughs> is being lost forever. Waiting for Elena. What? What misplaced loyalty stops you? Please understand. Ivan, you're drunk. Maybe. Maybe. Where is the doctor? In there, He's staying the night with me. Maybe I am drunk. Maybe I am. Nothing's impossible. And you've just been drinking together. Why? Why do you do that? Because. Gives me a taste of life, at least. Don't tell me not to, Elena. You never used to drink. I, I drink now. And you never used to talk so much. Go to bed. I'm tired. You. Elena. Elena. Stop. It's, it's disgusting. <laughs> She's gone. Ten years ago. At my sister's house, when I first met her, she was 17, and I was 37. Why didn't I fall in love with her then and propose to her? It would have been so easy, and she'd have been my wife now. And we would have both been woken up by the thunderstorm tonight. And she would have been scared, and I would have held her in my arms and, and whispered to her, Don't be frightened. 
I'm here. Oh, I'm here. What a sweet little dream. So sweet. <laughs> what a laugh. I'm crazy, aren't I? Dear God, how did I get so old? Who am I? She doesn't understand me. I hate all that rhetoric, that, that fake, lazy morality of hers, that, that fairy tale about the destruction of the world. I was deceived. They deceived me. The, the professor, that pathetic, gout-ridden old fool. For his sake, Sonia and I used to squeeze everything out of this estate. I, I worshipped him for years. We were miserly. We sold our butter and peas. We sold our cottage cheese and, and scrimped on food for ourselves so that we could scrape up every kopeck and send rubles to him. Thousands. I was proud of him, of, of his learning. I thought he was a genius. Dear God. Now he's retired, and, and what does his life amount to his legacy, this demigod. What? Nothing. Not a page. A nothing. He's absolutely unknown. All his fame. A soap bubble. I was deceived. I, I see that now. He cheated us. And we loved him. always 
does it, but you don't. It's dreadful at your age. It's nothing to do with age. When there is nothing in real life, one must have illusion. This is better than nothing. The hay is all cut. Every day it rains. Everything's rotting in the field, and you have illusion. You've given up on the farm. I've had to work alone, and I'm tired out, and I'm... There are tears in your eyes. Nonsense. There are tears in my eyes. You looked at me just now the way your mother used to, sweetheart. Oh, my sister, where are you now, my dear? If only you knew. If only you knew. What, Uncle? If only she knew what? My heart is breaking. No, nothing's the matter. I must go. I ask him to lie down, he sits up, and today he wouldn't see me at all. He's spoiled. Would you like something to eat? Maybe. Yes, please. I love eating at night. They say he's a favorite among women, and they spoil him. Hmm. I'm sure there's something in the sideboard. Oh, yes. Would you like some cheese? I haven't eaten a thing all day, just been drinking. Father is difficult. Man? You know, we're alone. And I can be honest with you, you know. I couldn't live in this house for a month. But stifling. Your father absorbed with his books and his gouts, your uncle, his depression, your Grandmother? Your stepmother? My stepmother? Beauty. Should be inside and out. The face, dress, soul, mind. And your stepmother is beautiful. But she does nothing. She just eats, sleeps, and walks around charming us with that beauty that is hers. And, and that's all. No responsibilities. Others work for her. An idle wife can never be pure. <coughs> Maybe I'm judging her. Maybe I'm dissatisfied with life. Like your Uncle Vanya, so we're both very grumpy. Dissatisfied with life? Mm. I like our life. I hate our life. A little Russian country village life. I hate it with the power of my soul. And as for my own personal life, dear God, there's nothing good about it. Have you ever noticed when you walk through the dark woods at night, if you have a little light shining ahead of you in the distance, then you forget the dark, you forget the branches as they whip your face, you forget you're tired. Now, I work harder than anyone else in this district. You know that. Fate whips me on without rest. But there's no light ahead of me. I don't have hope. I don't like people. It's a long time since I loved anyone. You love no one. Not a soul. Oh, I feel a sort of affection, you know, for your nanny, for example. 
But uh, our, our peasants are too much alike. They're stupid, backward, living in filth. And the intelligentsia, they're hard to bear with. I get tired of them. All their friends are foolish. Can't see further than their noses. <laughs> the intelligent ones are hysterical. They're morbidly critical. They're always consumed with self-analysis. They're whining, they're hateful, they're always picking faults. They sneak up and they look at me sideways out of the corner of their eye and they say, he's a neurotic. He's an eccentric. Or if they don't know what else to label me with, they say, he's a very queer fellow. Very queer. I like the woods. That's queer. <laughs> I don't eat meat. That's queer too. <laughs> Freedom. Simple, natural relations between man and man and man and nature do not exist, not in our life. <laughs> He's. Hmm. What? Please don't drink anymore. Why not? It's so unlike you. You're gracious and soft-spoken and... You have, more than anyone I know, such a beautiful soul. Why do you want to drink and play cards like ordinary people? Please, don't. You always say that people don't create anything. They just destroy what's been given to them from heaven. Why do you want to destroy yourself? Please, don't. All right, I, I won't drink anymore. Promise me. My word of honor. Thank you. Basta. <laughs> I've sobered up already. And I will remain so to the end of my days. But as I was saying, Life's got nothing for me. I'm old. I'm tired of working too hard. My my sensitivity is dead. I I, I love no one and never will. I, I can't form a real attachment with anyone ever again. I'm still moved by beauty. I'm not indifferent to it. I, I, I'm deeply moved by it. Yelena Andreevna, for example, she could turn my head in a day. But that's not love. That's not affection. What's wrong? Nothing. During Lent, one of my patients died in a chloroform. Hmm. It wasn't your... It's time to move on from that. Suppose I had a friend or a younger sister, and if you knew that she, that she loved you, how would that make you feel? I don't know. I don't think I'd feel anything. I think... <clears throat> I think I'd tell her I, I couldn't love her. I have too much weighing on my mind right now. Oh, if I must keep going, I must go now. Goodbye, little girl. But we'll be talking till morning. <laughs> I'll go out through the drawing room. Or I'm afraid your uncle Vanya would stop me. Last Sunday when we were leaving the 
the church, I overheard a woman say, she's so sweet and kind. What a pity she's so plain. So plain. The rain went away. The air is so fresh and clean. Where's the doctor? He's gone. Sophie. What? How much longer are you going to be mad at me? We haven't hurt each other. Why can't we be friends? That's enough of this. I want to. Let's make up. With all my heart. Has Paolo gone to bed? He's still sitting up in the drawing room. We haven't spoken to each other in weeks. God alone knows why. What's this? Mikhail Lubovitch had some supper. <laughs> There's some vodka. Let's drink to our friendship. Yes, out of the same glass. <laughs> there. Are we friends now? Yes. because you think I married your father for his money. But don't believe the gossip. I swear I married him for love. He fascinated me with his fame, his learning. It wasn't really love, I know that now, but at the time it seemed real. I'm innocent of ulterior motives, and yet your suspicious, bright little eyes have been accusing me ever since our marriage. Peace. Let's forget the past. You must not look that way at people. It doesn't become you. You have to trust or else you just can't live. Tell me honestly, as a friend. Yes? Are you happy? No. I knew it. I knew it. One more question. Don't you wish you had a younger husband? <laughs> what a little girl you still are. Of course I do. <laughs> All right, what else? Do you like the doctor? Yes, yes, very <laughs> much. Do I look silly? He just left and I can still hear his voice, his footsteps. In the dark window, I can see his face. <laughs> Let me say what I think. Oh, I can't say it, I'm ashamed. Come to my room and we'll talk there. Oh, do I look silly? Tell me something about him. What do I say? He's clever. He can do everything. He heals people. He plants trees. He's not just treating the sick and caring for the woods, sweetheart. He's a genius. You know what that means? Courage, profound freedom of thought. He plants a tree, and in his mind, he sees a thousand years into the future and thinks of the happiness of the human race. People like him are so rare, yes. and they have to be loved. But he drinks, and he can be coarse at times. So what? In Russia, a man of genius cannot be a saint. This life of his, shut out from the world, the cold, stormy climate, endless roads, impassable, bottomless mud. He's surrounded with rough peasants crushed by disease and poverty, never to rest, always working. How can he live for 40 years like that and keep himself spotless and sober? I wish you happiness with all my heart. You deserve it. <laughs> I'm a tedious peripheral character. In music, in love, in my husband's house, in everything. I've always been a secondary character. When you come to think of it, Sophie, I'm really very unhappy. I will never find happiness in this world. <laughs> never. Why are you laughing? I'm happy. I'm so happy. <laughs> I want music. I want to play something. Yes, do play. I can't sleep now. All right, I will. <laughs> Your father's still awake. Music irritates him when he 
Queen's Hill, but if he says it's all right, then I'll play a little. Go on, ask him so. All right. It's been so long since I've heard music. Now I'll sit and play and cry like an idiot. Is that you tapping, Yafim? Yes, it's me. Stop tapping. The master isn't well. I'm just drawing. Hey you, Dutra, Melody, Dutra, come on, Dutra. Hey you, Dutra, Melody, Dutra, come on, Dutra. We can't. Professor has been kind enough to express his wish that we all meet here at one o'clock. It's a quarter to one now. He apparently wants to communicate something to the world. A business matter, perhaps. Well, but he never had any business, did he? He writes drivel, grumbles about nothing, and burns with jealousy, and that's it. Uncle! I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Look at her. Wandering around, almost dropping from laziness. <laughs> Bella. <laughs> Aren't you dropping from exhaustion, just chattering away on and on? <laughs> I'm bored to death. I don't know what to do. There's so much to do if you wanted to do it. Well? You could help at the estate. You could teach children or care for the sick. There's so much. Before you and Papa came to live here, Uncle Vanya and I would go to the market and sell the flour ourselves. But I wouldn't know how, and besides, I'm not interested in that. The women only go about teaching and caring for sick peasants and moralistic novels. <laughs> well, how could I, apropos of nothing, just up and run off to teach? How can you not? If you just started doing something, you'd get used to it after a while. <laughs> Don't let yourself be bored, my darling. You feel bored and miserable and you don't know what to do, but boredom is infectious. Look at Uncle Vanya, <laughs> doing nothing, following you around like your shadow. And then I stop working to come over and talk to you. God, I'm so lazy now. And the doctor used to come here only once a month. Now he's driving here every day, leaving his forestry work and his practice. We're all under your spell. You must be a witch. <laughs> but my dear, why depress yourself? You have mermaid blood in your veins. Awaken to your true mermaid self just once. Let go and run away from all this. Fall for some reckless water sprite. Dive into the waterfall. And then let Herr Professor and all the rest of us throw up our hands and wonder in despair. And then we may have our hands free again. Stop. Stop it. How cruel you are. Well, well, I'm sorry. No, please, please, I am sorry. Peace. You would try the patience of an angel. You know that. Let me, let me bring you some roses. I gathered them for you this morning. Autumn roses. Beautiful, sad ones. <laughs> Sad autumn roses. September already. How will we ever get through the winter? Where's the doctor? In Uncle Vanya's room writing something. I'm glad Uncle went out. I have to talk to you. What about? What about? All right, it's all right. <gasps> I'm so plain. You have beautiful hair. No, no, don't say that. People always tell plain women, you have beautiful hair or you have beautiful eyes. I have been in love with him for six years. I love him more than I loved my mother. All the time. I can hear his voice. I feel the touch of his hand. 
I keep waiting for him to walk through that door, and I always come to you and I talk about him. Now he's here all the time, but he doesn't see me. I'm invisible. So hopeless. God help me. I have no strength left. I pray for him. I keep going to him, talking to him, looking into his eyes. I have no pride left. I can't control myself. I told Uncle Vanya yesterday, all the servants know. Everyone does. Does he? No. He doesn't notice. He's a strange man. <laughs> what if? Let me have a talk with him. I'll be indirect. I'll only hint at it. All these years, you don't really want to remain in uncertainty any longer, do you? All right. The question is simply this. Does he love you or not? Don't worry, sweetheart, and don't be embarrassed. I'll be so careful he won't even notice. All we want to know is yes or no. And if it's no, then maybe he should stop coming here so often? Good. It'll be easier to bear if you don't see him constantly. All right, very good. We won't put it off. We're ready. <coughs> he wanted to show me some maps. Tell him I want to see them. You'll tell me the truth. Of course I will. Because I think the truth, no matter how bad it is, is better than this uncertainty. Trust me, darling. Yes. Yes, you want to see the map. And yet, yes. Yet, at least with uncertainty, one can hope. What did you say? Nothing. Hmm. There's nothing worse than knowing someone else's secret when you cannot help them. So what if he's obviously not in love? Why shouldn't he marry her? She may not be beautiful, but she'd be a perfect wife for a country doctor his age. She's smart, she's kind, and innocent. No, that's not it, really. I understand poor Sonia, living in such lonely isolation from the world, in a place that seems so desperately boring, to me anyway, with nothing but gray shadows instead of human beings surrounding her, listening to them talk, talk, talk. These people who do nothing but eat, drink, and sleep. And then he appears. <laughs> this handsome, fascinating man. So different from them, like a bright moon rising out of the shadows. To fall in love with such a man. I think I'm a little attractive myself. Yes, when he's not here, I'm bored, and I'm smiling right now just thinking of him. Vanya said, I have mermaid's blood in my veins. Let go and run away. Why shouldn't I, for once in my life, fly away, free as a bird, fly away from all of you with your sleepy faces and your talk, forget you exist, these gray shadows. <laughs> but I'm a coward. My conscience would kill me. He comes every day now. I can guess why. Dear God, I'm guilty already. I could cry, follow my knees and beg Sonia's forgiveness. Good morning. You wanted to see my handiwork. You promised to show me some of your work yesterday. Are you busy now? No, of course not. Uh, where were you born? Uh, St. Petersburg. And where did you study? Uh, I studied at the Conservatory of Music. You might not find this interests you. Well, why not? I don't know the country, that's true, but I've read a great deal. Huh. I have my own table here in the house, mm -hmm. in Ivan Petrovich's room. And when I'm falling down exhausted and tired from my practice, I come over here for an hour or two and work on these. Ivan Petrovich and Sofia Alexandrovna sit clicking the abacus to settle their household accounts, and I sit beside them with my paints and brushes and 
warm, snug, and peaceful. And I don't allow myself this pleasure more than once a month. Now, this is a map of our district as it was about 50 years ago. Now, the dark and the light green stand for forests, and you'll see that most of the area is covered with forests. Now, where the red cross hatches cover the green, elk and wild goats used to live. I show both the flora and the fauna. On the lake, there were swans, geese, ducks, and power of birds, as the old people used to say. All kinds of them flying in thick clouds. Next to the villages and hamlets, you'll see all sorts of small settlements. Little farms, water mills, monasteries, the horned cattle, and horses. These are shown in blue, so the blue is very thick here, for example. And there were great herds of them. And on average, every household had three horses. Now, the second map, which shows our district as it was 25 years ago, you'll see that already only a third of the area is green with forests. The wild goats have managed, but we still see some elk. And the blue and the green are very pale, and so on, and so on. And now for the third part, which shows our district as it is today. There are only patches of green. No continuous sections. The swan, wood grouse, elk disappeared. There's no trace of the old water mills, the monasteries, the farms. It is, on the whole, a picture of decay, which in 10 or 15 years more will be total. Now, we could say that cultural influences are at work, that inevitably the old life must give place to the new. And I would agree with you. If the ruined forest gave way to roads or schools, mills, factories had taken their place, but nothing like this has happened. I mean, at least then the people would have a chance at better lives. However, we have the same swaps, the same diphtheria, poverty, disease, typhus, villages on fire. What we have is degeneration and decay caused by an unceasing, insupportable struggle to survive, to exist. And the people are stymied by inertia, apathy, sloth, ignorance. That when a man, a freezing, sick, starving man, simply to save his life or that of his children, instinctively snatches at anything that will stop the hunger and keep him warm. This man will destroy everything, and, and nearly everything has been destroyed. And nothing has been created to take its place. And I see from your expression this doesn't interest you. Uh, I understand so little of it. There's very little to understand. It simply doesn't interest you. Uh, to be honest, my mind was on something else. I apologize. I want to give you a little examination, and I'm uneasy and don't know how to begin. An examination? Uh, yes, an examination, but a really simple one. Let's sit down. This concerns a certain young person. We'll be honest with each other, as friends, and then we'll forget all about it. All right. It's about my stepdaughter, Sonia. You like her, don't you? Yes, of course. I respect her. Do you like her as a woman? No. Oh. Then one more thing and I'm finished. Have you noticed anything? Noticed? No, nothing. Then you don't love her. I see it in your eyes. She's very unhappy. Understand that and stop coming here. Well, well. I have too much to do. I don't have the time, but well, how would I? God, how embarrassing. I'm uh, sorry. It's like I've been carrying great weight around, and... Uh, well, at least it's over, and we'll forget we ever talked about it, and you'll go. You're intelligent. You understand. I'm turning red. Huh. You know, if you had approached me even a month ago, then I, I might have considered it, but now I... And of course, if the girl is unhappy. <laughs> but I don't see why you needed to put me through an examination. <coughs> oh, how sly you are. What? <laughs> you, you are sly. Well, if Sonia is suffering, why does that mean you need to examine me? Don't bother to look surprised. You, you know why I come here every month, every day who I come to see, my beautiful tigress. Beautiful. 
Don't look at me that way. I'm a wounded prey. Titus? Beautiful sleep. Ah, but she must have a victim. <laughs> for a whole month, I've thrown away everything for you, and you are so pleased to see it. Uh, you knew all this without putting me through your examination very well. Well, here I am. I surrender. <laughs> You have gone insane. What, are you shy? Are you afraid? I'm going to tell you something. I'm a better, stronger woman than you think I am. Goodbye. All right, all right, I'm coming. But first, where will we meet? No, please, tell me. Somebody might come in. Where? How wonderful you are. And just, just, just one kiss. Just I let swear. Me kiss. No, 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 please don't swear. There is no need. Stop. No, no, no. But tell enough. Me. Let go and go away. You're forgetting yourself. No, please. Tell me. Tell me. Where will we meet? Tell me. Can't you see? It's inevitable. We can't escape this. <laughs> okay. Tomorrow oh, in wait, the orchard, don't. 2 o'clock. Let me Tomorrow. go. Will you? Oh, God. Will you? Oh, this is horrible. Oh, God, no. Oh, oh God. <laughs> It's, it's uh, nothing. Never mind. I'll go. Uh, never mind. It's, it's nothing. Uh. The weather is very nice today, my dear Ivan Petrovich. Uh. It was cloudy this morning. It looked like it could rain. But now the sun is out. It's a beautiful afternoon. In fact, we're having wonderful water. Wheat is doing fine. It's just... Just that the days are growing short. <laughs> Whatever you can, do your best, Ivan. Anything you can think of to get my husband and I away from here today. What? Ivan, did you hear me? This very day. Oh, I. Oh, all, all right. I, I, uh, I, I saw all of it, Elaine. I saw everything. Ivan, I have oh not been feeling well myself, Your Excellency. For the last two days, I've been living and. And there's something wrong with my head. Where are the others? I hate this house. It's a labyrinth. People are always unavailable, scattered throughout the 26 rooms. You never can find anyone. Ask Mariah Vasilyevna and Yelena Andreevna to come here. I am already here. Uh, uh, please, my friend, sit down. What did he say? I'll tell you later. You're trembling. I understand. He said he won't come here again, yes? Tell me, yes? One can, after all, put up with ill health. What I cannot stand is this country life. I feel as though I've been sucked up off the earth and landed on an alien planet. Please, sit down, ladies and gentlemen. Sonia. Sonia. Uh, she's not listening. Wonderful. Uh, Nanny, you sit down, too. I, I ask for your patience, ladies and gentlemen. I beg you, my friends, to, as the saying goes, lend me your ears. Um, if, in fact, I am not needed, perhaps I could be excused. No, you are needed here more than anyone else. Oh, and um, what is it you need from me? Need from you? Why are you so angry? If I've done anything to offend you, please excuse me. You needn't adopt that tone. State your business. What is it you need? Ah, here is Mama. I shall begin, my friends. I have asked you to assemble here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, to inform you that the Inspector General is coming to visit us. <laughs> <laughs> but joking aside, I have asked you here to discuss a very serious matter. I want to ask for your help and advice, and knowing your unfailing kindness, I hope I can receive them. I'm a bookworm, a scholar, unfamiliar with practical affairs, and I find I cannot dispense with the help of well-informed, uh, practical people such as uh, you, Ivan Petrovich, and you, Ilya Ilyich, and uh, you, Mama. And the truth is, Manette omnis unanox. Oh, what night awaits us all? That is to say, we are all mortal. Our lives are in the hands of God. And as I am old and ill, I realize it is high time I settle the matter of my property. So 
for as far as it concerns my family. My life is over. Oh. I'm not thinking of myself, but I have a young wife and an unmarried daughter. I cannot continue to live in the country. It's impossible. We were not made for country life, yet we cannot afford to live in town on the income derived from the estate. We might sell the woods, for example, but that would be an extreme measure we could not repeat every year. We must take some steps to guarantee ourselves a permanent, more or less fixed yearly income. With this idea in mind, I have thought of a plan. I now have the honor of presenting to you. In rough outline, our estate yields on average no more than 2%. I propose to sell it. If we then invest our money in bonds, we should earn up to 4 or 5%. Plus, there should be a surplus of over several thousand rubles, which we could purchase a villa in Finland. Oh, excuse me. I think I may have heard you wrong. Could you repeat what you just said? I would invest the money in bonds and with this surplus buy a villa in Finland. No, no, not about Finland. You, you said something else? I propose to sell this estate. Shh. You're going to sell the estate? Yes, I propose to sell it. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. That was it. <laughs> I thought I heard that. You're going to sell the estate. Wonderful. <laughs> Splendid idea. And um, where will my old mother and me go? And, and Sonia? What do you propose to do with us? Uh, that will be decided later. In good time. We can't decide everything at once. Excuse me. Up until this moment, I seem to have been unforgivably thick-headed. Huh, I've always been stupid enough to suppose that the estate belonged to Sonia. And of course... As my father bought it as a wedding dowry for my sister, and I foolishly believed that we were under Russian law and not Turkish, so that my sister's estate would pass to Sonia. Of course it is Sonia. No one disputes that. I won't sell it without her consent. And I am doing it for Sonia's benefit. This is inconceivable. Totally. I've gone insane. Sure, oh, oh, but don't contradict Alexander. But trust him. He knows what's right better than we do. I... Give me some water. Go ahead, say whatever you want. I don't understand why you are so upset. I didn't say my plan is the ideal one, and if you all object to it, I shall not insist. I not only sustain respect for learning, no Your Excellency, but also a family feeling. My brother, Grigory Ilyich's wife's brother, perhaps you know him, his name was Konstantin Trofimovich Lakadimonov, and he used to be a magistrate, no, 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 and, and he was a master of arts. Yes, but Wait a while. We'll, we'll talk about that later. This, this is business now. Here, ask him. Oh, what good would that be? The estate was bought from his uncle. Why should I ask him the question? The price at that time was uh, 95,000 rubles. My father paid 70 and then left a, a mortgage debt of 25. Listen to me. This estate could never have been bought if I hadn't renounced my inheritance in favor of my sister who might deeply loved. And what's more, for ten years I worked like an ox and paid off the debt on the mortgage. I regret I ever started this conversation. This estate is free and clear of debt only because of my efforts. And, and now that I'm old, I'm to be thrown out like, like garbage? I don't understand you. What are you getting at? Twenty-five years I managed this estate. I paid you the money from it like an honest servant. And in all that time, from when I was young till now, you never gave me a single word of thanks. You offered me the beggarly salary of 500 rubles a year out of pittance. And adding a single ruble to it never even occurred to you. But if I'm Petrovich, I don't understand about such things. <laughs> I'm not a practical <laughs> man. I don't know about any of it. You might have helped yourself to as much as you like. You mean? I might have stolen it. What, do you all despise me because I'm not a thief? Huh. Indeed, why didn't I steal? It would only have been fair and I wouldn't be a beggar now. Vanya, dear friend, no I, I tremble you don't. Why spoil so good patience? Please stop for 25 years. My 
mother and I have been living here like church mice. Our every thought and prayer was yours. By day we, we talked of nothing but you and your work. With pride and reverence we uttered your name. We wasted our nights reading your books and your periodicals, which I now loathe with all my soul. Oh, what in God's name do you want anyway? We thought of you as a genius and we knew yeah. your words by heart, but my eyes are open. I see what you are now. You, you write about art, and you know nothing about it. All your books, which I used to love, are not worth a copper copet. You're a fraud. Can't anyone make you stop? I won't. I won't shut up. I refuse. Wait a minute. I'm not finished yet. You have ruined my life. I, I never really even had a life. I, all my best years are gone thanks to you. You, you've been my worst enemy. I don't, I don't see what it is you think you want. I, what right do you have to talk to me like this? You're a nothing. Oh, a non-entity. You want the estate taken? I don't need it. Oh my God, I wasted it. I'm, I'm clever and brave. I, I'm gifted. I, if I'd had a normal life, I, I, I might have been a Schopenhauer or a Dostoevsky. Oh my God, what am I saying? I don't even know what I'm saying. Oh, Mom, please, please, Mom. I'm, I'm so unhappy. Oh, Nanny. Please, help me. Listen to everyone. Mom, I don't know what to do anymore! No, 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 don't, don't, don't speak, don't. I know. I, I know what to do. You think you'll forget about all of us! My friends, tell me what in God's name is going on. Take that madman away from my sight. I cannot live under the same roof with him. He's always there, almost beside me. Make him move into the village or into the lodge or... I am leaving immediately, but I cannot stay in the same house with him. We're leaving today. We should get ready to leave here. He is on nothing. You must be kind to us, Papa. Have pity on us. <laughs> Uncle Bobby and I are so unhappy. Remember how when you were younger, Uncle Bobby and Grandma used to copy and translate your books for you every night. Every single night. Uncle Bobby and I worked without rest. We never. We were afraid to spend even a kopeck on ourselves. We sent it all to you. We did not eat the bread of idleness. Oh, I'm saying it wrong, as I should like to say it, but you must understand us, Papa. You must be merciful to us. Please, Papa. Alexander, for God's sakes, make it up with him. Go and talk it over, I beg you. Very well. I will talk to him, but I won't apologize for a thing. Good. I, I, I'm not angry with him. I, I'm not accusing him of anything. But you must admit that his behavior is strange, to say the least. Very well. I will go to him. Be gentle, Nancy. Try to him. There, my baby. He will be all right. You'll see, when the geese have cackled, they'll stop again. First they cackle, and then they stop. Oh, you are shivering all over as if you were freezing. And then, little orphan girl, God is merciful. A little linden tea, or a raspberry and it'll all pass away. Oh, don't cry, Oh my god! Oh my god.
with the idea. We'll soon be called to say goodbye. We've already called the horses to be brought around. There's only a little left. They're going to Kharkov to live there. <laughs> well, it's better that way. They had a bad scare. Hmm. The professor's wife keeps saying, we're ready already, let's get going. And we'll go to Kharkov and look around <laughs> and then send for our things. They're traveling light. <laughs> Seems they weren't meant to live here, Marina Timofeyevna. It was fate. Well, it's better that way. What a commotion they raised this morning. Just shameful. Yes, like it was from the brush of Ivazovsky. <laughs> what a horrible sight. I wish I could unsee it. Well, now we'll live as we did before, in, in the old ways, with, with tea at eight and dinner at one. And we'll sit down to supper in the evening, everything as it should be, like decent folks, like Christians. <laughs> it's been a long time since I've tasted noodles, sinner that I am. Yes, yes, it's been a long time since we've had noodles. It's been ages, ages. <laughs> Marina Timothyevna? As I was walking in the village this morning, a shopkeeper yelled out to me, hey, freeloader, scrounging on other people's money. I felt very sad. Oh, don't pay them any mind, my dear. We're all freeloaders in the eyes of God. You and Sonia, Ivan Petrovich, all of us, we're just the same. Everybody works hard. Nobody's sitting idle. Where's Sonia? in the garden with the doctor, and they're looking for Ivan Petrovich. They're very afraid. Yes. That he might lay violent hands on himself. And where's his pistol? I hid it in the root cellar. Oh, what goings on, what goings on? Ivan. Go away, please. Go away and leave me alone. I, I can't stand you watching me like this. Of course, Vanya. The gander cackled. Gaw, gaw, gaw. <laughs> leave me alone. I would with great pleasure, and I ought to have left hours ago, but I will say it again. I am not leaving until you give me back what you took from me. I took nothing from you. I ought to have left hours ago. I took nothing of yours. Oh, really? Well, fine. I will wait a little while longer, and then you'll have to forgive me. I will grab you, tie you down, and search you. I mean, do whatever you want. God, I made such a damn fool of myself to shoot at him twice and miss both times. I'll never forgive myself for that. <laughs> if you really felt like shooting somebody, you might as well have shot yourself in the head. You know something? It's strange. Here I've attempted murder, and no one has called the police. I'm not going to be arrested or brought to trial. Why not? It must mean they think I'm insane. <laughs> I'm crazy, but those who hide their worthlessness, their stupidity, their heartless cruelty behind the mask of a professor, they are sane. Those who marry those old men and deceive them under their own noses, they're sane. I saw you kiss her. I saw the way you held her in your arms. Yes, yes. I kissed her, yes, sir. It's more than you did to there. No. no, you're not insane. It's the earth that's crazy because she still bears us on her breast. That's poetic nonsense. Well, I'm insane, so I'm not responsible. That's a nice trick. You're not crazy. You're just a fool. You're a clown made of beanbags. I used to think that every fool was sick, out of his mind. But now I see being crazy is the normal condition for a man. You are perfectly normal. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm so ashamed of myself. I, I can't explain how sharp it feels. It's, it's like a physical pain. I, I, I can't bear it. What do I do? What do I do? Nothing. Tell me something. I'm 47. If I live to be 60, that's another 13 more years. How will I get through those 13 years? What will I do? How will I get through them? You know, 
you know, if you could start your life over differently. Just wake up one sunny morning and the past forgotten, just blown away like smoke. How could you do that? Start a new life. Shut up. Look, we're not going to get that. Our situation, yours and mine, it's hopeless. It is? Yes. Then give me something. I have a burning pain Do here. Please shut up. The people who come after us in a hundred years, they will despise us for living such blindly, stupid lives. And maybe they'll know how to be happy, but for you and I, there is but one hope, and that hope is this, that when we are dead in our graves, that visions may come to us, and maybe even peaceful ones. Yes, Brother Vanya, we... There were two, only two intelligent men in this whole district. We spoke of ourselves. Ten years or so, living this miserable place, this backwards. It sucked the life out of us. It poisoned us with its putrid air. And now we are, surprised, <laughs> as contemptible, as petty, and despicable as the rest. But don't change the subject. You give me back what you took. I took nothing. Look, you took a small bottle of morphine out of my traveling medicine bag. If you insist on killing yourself, then go into the woods, shoot yourself there. But give me back what you took from me, or people will talk. They will say, I gave it to you. It's bad enough I will have to cut you open in the postmortem. And how enjoyable do you think that will be for me? Leave me alone. Sophia, how is it? Your uncle has taken a small bottle of morphine out of my medicine bag. Please. Tell him to give it back. Tell him his behavior is, well, it's really stupid. And besides, I have to go. Uncle Vanya, did you take the morphine? Yes, he took it. I'm sure of it. Give it back, Uncle. Please give it back. Why do you want to frighten us? I'm unhappy, too. But I'm not giving in to despair. I'll bear it until my life ends by itself, and you must be patient, too. Dear sweet Uncle Vanya, give it back. You're so kind. I know you'll feel sorry for us and give it back. You have to bear it, Uncle Vanya. There. Take it. But... We have to do something. I, I, I must be busy or else I can't bear it. I can't. Yes, work. As soon as we've seen them off, we'll get back to work. Let everything get muddled. Now I can be off. Are you here, Ivan Petrovich? We're leaving in a moment. Go to Alexander. He wants to see you. Go, Uncle Vanya. Come, let's go. You have to make peace with Papa. Going away. Goodbye. So soon. Carriage is waiting. Huh. Goodbye. Today you promised me you'd go away yourself. Yes, I haven't forgotten. I'm just leaving. Were you really so frightened? Was it really so terrifying? Yes. Then stay. Tomorrow in the orchard. No, it's all settled. And that's the only reason I have the courage to look at you, because we're going. There's something I want to ask of you. If I cross your mind, please don't think too badly of me. I'd like for you to respect me. Please, God, stay. Just admit to yourself there is nothing for you to do in this life. You have no goal. You have no purpose. There's nothing to occupy your mind. Sooner or later, you will give in to your feelings. And wouldn't it be better if it was here in the country, and not in some place like Harkov or Kursk, but here where we have forests and half-ruined old country houses? How which... funny you are. I'm angry with you, but then when I remember you, it'll make me happy. You're a unique person, very original. We'll never meet again, I think, and so I'll tell you, why should I hide it? That I was falling, just a little in love with you. Come, let's shake hands. And let's part as friends. Let's not think ill of each other. 
Yes, you should go. It's interesting, though, isn't it? You and your husband come, and all these busy, active people who are creating something, suddenly we all drop what we're doing, and we attend on you and your husband's gout for a whole summer. Two of you have infected us with your laziness. <laughs> then I was swept off my feet like the rest. I've done nothing. Peasants are falling ill, they're pasturing their cattle in the orchards in the forest. Wherever you go, you and your husband, you spread destruction in your wake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just kidding. But I think if you have to say something, something terrible would have happened for me, for you too. I think we both know that. So, yeah, Benita La Comedia. I'm taking this pencil as a souvenir. It is strange. You come, we meet, and suddenly it seems we have to part forever, but while we're alone and before Vanya comes in with another bouquet of roses, let me just kiss you once. Goodbye. And I bear no malice for the past that by God to be by God. I've gone through so much in the last few hours, I feel as though I could write a whole book for posterity on the art of the living. I gladly accept your apology and offer you my You'll receive the same amount as you did before, every month without fail. Everything will be as it was before. Mm -hmm. oh. Have you picture taken, Alexander? Send me one. Of course, of course. How precious you are to me. Goodbye, Your Excellency. Don't forget us. Goodbye, goodbye, everyone. Ah. Thank you for the pleasure of your company. I respect your opinions, your enthusiasms, your spontaneity. A thought. Permit me as an old man to offer one word of advice. Do something, my friend. Work. <laughs> Do something for the people. <laughs> Good luck to you all. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, my darling. Please forgive me. I will never see you again. Goodbye. Goodbye, little boy. Glad to be gone. Wild horses couldn't drag him back. They're gone. They're gone. May God be with them. Well, Uncle Vanya, let's do something. Yes. It's a long time since you and I sat together at this table. Sad now, they're gone. 
one, I'll take the other. Yes. Oh, I ready for Betty Bot. Pen scratch, the cricket sing. It's warm and peaceful. I hate to go. My horses are ready. I just have to say goodbye to you, my friends, and my table here, and then I'm off. Oh, must you leave so soon, can't you stay a while? No, no, I can't. Your horses are ready. Yes. Thank you. Please, be careful not to crush the portfolio. When will you come to see us again? Next summer. Probably not this winter, though, of course, if anything happens, let me know and I'll be here. Thank you. Thank you for your kindness, your bread and salt, and, and everything, in fact. Hmm? Goodbye, old form. Oh, you're not leaving without your tea. Oh, I don't seem to want any. Uh, then a little vodka instead. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh. My, uh, Trace horse is going limp. I noticed it yesterday when Petrushka was taking him to water. You must change his shoes. Yes. To stop the blacksmith of Rodespinoy. Can't be helped. Huh. I suppose the heat in Africa might be, well, terrific right now. Africa. Yes. <laughs> Here you are. To your health, little father. Your pride. And you've never 
haven't been happy, I know. Wait, wait, Uncle Vanya.